We provide a number of uh, uh, testing services, test tool, consulting, and software development and security evaluations. Uh, because we're doing certification, we work with many people, and uh, uh, this is, this is a, uh, um, a selection of those people. We have offices uh, around the world. So what I'd like to just uh, briefly kind of go through today is uh, what, what does chip migration involve? What are the, um, what are the key milestones, uh, some recent developments, and uh, what happens in practice, and what are the potentials for optimizing a, uh, a, uh, a certification project? So firstly, uh, what is a uh, certification project? This is a, uh, a complete payment system here. And the, the whole payment system actually operates on the basis that there are multi-parties, and each of these multi-parties have to be compliant to the system specifications for the whole system to work. And as a result of that, um, there is um, a, a number of uh, certifications that people have to do to actually make sure this whole system works. And each party is individually tested. So here we have... Um, uh, an overview of the, the, the chip migration. So on the issuer side, you can see that um, going from A to Z here, from starting out from a chip migration down to issuance at the end, these are the steps that need to be taken. You know, at the beginning, decision and planning, what do you want to do with the card? Where do you want to actually deploy it? Look at the components of your bureau and, um, and your, your card to select those, uh, each of which have to be provided by certified vendors. Then you come on to the network side where you are looking at uh, an implementation plan uh, to actually implement your network and your network messages. Um, and uh, this will be done in conjunction with the scheme, with the payment scheme, who will actually define the test plan and the test that you have to undertake. Um, then once you've actually uh, set up your bureau and configured your bureau, the card is then validated. Uh, and all this from the issuer right down to the card is done on test systems. And then finally, you move to the production environment, do end-to-end -end testing, and then you're able to actually go into mass issuance. There's a similar A to Z on the acquiring side. Decision and planning, selection of terminals, uh, testing of the, uh, the network connection, adding the terminals and doing a complete terminal integration, and then finally m moving to the uh, live, uh, end -to live environment and doing an end-to-end -end test. So what does that mean? just to, to run through that uh, in, uh, in a bit more detail. So we have the various components that, uh, uh, of a system which are firstly individually tested. So we can see here that um, the vendor components, the card personalization, the merchant uh, terminal, the, the, the card production are individually certified with the vendors. And so any bank uh, or scheme uh, looking to actually implement a system will have to get letters of approval from those vendors to make sure that they're qualified to be used by that environment. Then the banks, the, uh, uh, the issuer and the acquirer, um, connect to the payment system. So this is where the acquirer tests, uh, and the, sorry, the issuer tests and the uh, acquirer tests for the network happen. These tests are actually uh, test the message integrity uh, and this is a one-time operation per profile of payment transaction. Um, and that just simply connects you at a network level to the actual uh, uh, payment scheme. Then we have the, 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 from the issuer side, we have the card testing. Um, with card personalization validation, uh, a card is actually produced from the production environment of the card and an image is taken from the card, uh, and that is what's actually um, validated. So since you've got a, uh, uh, a card image profile that's actually been generated from the production environment, this card personalization validation effectively checks 
this whole cycle, uh, in, in uh, this whole section of part of the issuer. And this is normally um, done for people migrating to new issuance or even if they're introducing a new card. On the acquirer side, the terminal, that the card terminal interaction is actually checked, but this is not a check just between the, the it's not just a terminal check, it's a check of the conversation between the card and the terminal and the messages that go right back to the payment scheme. A simulator is put in place for the payment scheme and the logs from the simulator and the logs from the card terminal transaction are compared and checked against the payment scheme requirements so that effectively this whole chain is tested within a, um, uh, a terminal integration. Uh, within this terminal integration, the, the tests also look at the business requirements that, for this acceptance and make sure that the actual software and configuration of the terminal actually meet the business requirements that the uh, acquirer has actually uh, set. set. Uh, finally, for both the issuer and acquirer, um, the testing is then moved from a test environment to a live environment where live cards and live terminals are actually used to perform transactions so that the production system can be tested before full deployment of terminals or mass issuance of cards. Because sometimes in the transfer from the test environment to the production environment, there are changes and mistakes that are actually made. And this is a protection for the acquirers and for the, uh, uh, the issuers. So here you can see Comparing against uh, those tests, you can see the uh, the end-to-end -end project um, for the issuer, the end-to-end -end project for the acquirer. So, what actually happens? What actually happens in practice when we actually look at this? Um, when we look at the network side, uh, we have a test plan generated by the uh, um, a test plan generated by, by the payment scheme. We have the implementation and test of the, uh, the system. Uh, we have uh, the user acceptance test and then we have the result validation. And these, uh, the, the structure of these tests, whether it's network or whether it's for terminals, are, are pretty much the same for, for acquirers. And I'll, I'm gonna focus mostly on acquirers from this section. But what we find in practice is that um, uh, the, the host vendors uh, quite often don't configure exactly towards the, uh, um, the acquirer um, requirements. And uh, the same goes for terminals, so that uh, we find that when we're going through the detailed uh, testing, that we, 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 we have to um, um, fix those issues. Um, it's different to say that um, a host or a terminal is configured for EMV, we're actually talking about the payment scheme requirements on top of EMV. And this is the thing to actually um, to, 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 to beware of. Certification testing and network interface validation are effectively user acceptance tests. They're not intended to be um, uh, full testing of your network. The payment schemes expect you to actually undertake those tests yourself. Uh, but sometimes issuers and acquirers use those uh, certification tests as part of their, uh, 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 rely on those tests as their test plan. They should have their own test plan. So uh, when we actually then look at uh, something uh, for MasterCard, for example, and now I'll just kind of focus on the terminal, um, terminal integration plan, um, uh, we see that uh, what's provided is a test plan um, and the types of test plans and result certification services that you get are uh, uh, the uh, MTIP which tests contact, um, we provide uh, MTIP Plus which actually provides uh, hands-on uh, re remote support for people doing terminal integration and we also provide uh, MTIP 2 Pass which actually gives you some pre-validation testing so that you can pass, you can uh, 
more quickly debug uh, your, um, your terminal integration. Uh, for the uh, contactless interface, we provide uh, um, PayPass contactless uh, terminal integration services, again providing test plans and uh, results certification. Uh, for those of you who are actually looking at um, um, doing contactless certification, it's just a quick note that uh, in MasterCard, the uh, contactless TIP certification has been updated. Uh, the uh, PayPass MTIP has been introduced in 2012. It used to be a paper-based um, um, service. It replaces the old MTIP, and the key, the key differences are it now uses an automatic questionnaire to generate the test plan. It's a similar process to the existing MTIP, which is used for contact terminals. And the key point for this, it's not uh, for use with uh, version 1.3 terminals. It, it's, it's really only aimed at um, uh, terminals which have a, a higher um, um, version kernel for this. But it's normally, if you're doing a new terminal integration, it's always best to use the latest kernel. There is a transition time scale for this. Uh, any new products, projects that um, uh, are now beginning, uh, it's mandatory for them to use it. Any projects that are ongoing, then um, from the beginning of August, they must use this new process. Uh, so what are the potentials for optimizing uh, terminal integration, which is often the, uh, uh, the area where acquirers take quite, a, quite, quite long? Um, the first thing is, is that uh, we now have uh, a product called Savvy, which is a, uh, um, a, a test analysis piece of software. And this kind of uh, optimizes the speed at which you can actually go through a terminal integration project. What you do with this is once you've actually done your testing and you've got your logs, you load the simulator backend logs and the card terminal logs into Savvy. It matches those logs together, evaluates them, and tells you which ones have actually passed, which ones have actually failed. It allows you then to drill down and find out where the issues with these, um, with, with the test logs are. Uh, it gives you a project management tool, so it makes the uh, managing the project um, very easy. Uh, it supports MasterCard and Visa, and it provides guidance on each test. So that when you're going through a test, it explains why the test is there, what inputs you have to make, what outputs you expect. So that when you are doing a terminal integration, if you're new to terminal integration, it provides you a, uh, um, a very simple way to actually uh, run the tests. Um, this, uh, we have uh, test tool card subsets, which we now package so that if you're starting to just do um, uh, MTIP, there is a simple package of MTIP cards to be able to actually do your testing. If you want pre-validation, we have a pack which does pre-validation. If you just want to do contactless testing, you can just order a suite of test cards for contactless testing. So the point is that what it does um, is that it makes it very easy for you to construct a test system to actually uh, um, um, do that. Now, if you look, if you add Savvy into that with the test analysis tool, what this eventually does, it means you make fewer mistakes. So you have to submit, submit your um, test logs less time because you have less errors. And actually what, what this means is that the test analysis software pays for itself in with, within one or two projects. So it really is a good investment to do that. Uh, other ways to actually optimize your terminal integration is that um, we have here um, the ability to do stand-in testing. So we can do the, uh, the, the, the debug testing for your network. We can do uh, the user acceptance testing, which is basically the network interface validation testing. And we can do the same on terminals as well. So that uh, if you've done, got your terminal impl implementation uh, ready, and you, you need to actually, you've got it implemented and you want to do the final implement debug testing for that prior to the certification testing, we can do both, the debug and the actual certification testing. And this is actually very fast. So in the network standing testing, we can uh, cover all of the types of profiles you're likely to meet. 
from uh, mag stripe testing to chip testing on ATM and POS networks, both contact and contactless. For the integration testing of terminals, uh, the debug testing is, um, is, is by quote because it depends on the state of your system. But if we're talking about terminal integration testing of uh, ATM, we're talking about two to four days to actually complete that. We're talking about uh, one to three days to actually complete uh, a POS terminal. And uh, for, for MasterCard certification, we have a very fast certification that then actually goes on the end of that. So for, a, for an, uh, an ATM, um, we can actually complete that almost within a week. So this is very, very high speed testing that we can actually do and get you through. If you've got time, tight time scales, you've got a, uh, um, a mandate to meet. And in some cases, it's just more cost effective to do it that way because it ties less, ties, uh, less of your staff up. And in addition to that, then we can man project manage all of this effectively to take you from NI the beginning of NIV right through to actual terminal integration uh, in, in, in one whole project. Uh, all this is modular, so you can uh, uh, mix and match whatever suits your need. Uh, you can choose network or terminal integration, debug or, or um, uh, UAT. Uh, you can do your own testing or um, do it on site, or we can provide you uh, a remote on site. Uh, if you want to do uh, uh, your to optimize your uh, on-site, your own test engineers. We have Safi, Savvy, and then we have the tool packages to make that, uh, to complete that picture. So it's a complete modular uh, approach to actually uh, 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 to do certification, either at low cost or at high speed, whatever suits your need. So uh, with issuer project products, uh, what we find here is that um, uh, we can provide uh, paper validation so that you don't have to actually go through uh, um, uh, a full CPV. We can look at your profile and, and advise you if there are any issues with it. Uh, we provide a number of profiles, not only the standard profiles that are available from uh, people like MasterCard, but the, uh, the other non-standard profiles, special profiles we do um, uh, not only do we do uh, testing for uh, standard contact and contactless, but we do uh, uh, mobile um, certification and certification for advanced products like MCHIP Advanced and uh, uh, other applications. We have fast track services. Uh, the normal services for these CPV uh, is within five days per uh, profile evaluation, but we can speed that up at, uh, and give you a 48-hour uh, turnaround. Um, we also have for cards, we have a, uh, a test tool, uh, which is a, uh, um, uh, a personalization validation tool. And the key point about this personalization validation tool is that it includes special MasterCard tests. We've been validating, um, uh, we've been validating uh, uh, cards for MasterCard for over the past seven years. And from that, we've learned a lot about why issuers take a long time to actually pass their validation. <clears throat> and we've built these extra tests into that, that tool so we can actually reduce the number of iterations. Um, looking at the number of people that actually use this PVT tool, 70% uh, of users that actually use this tool actually pass first time. And within two or three card projects, if, if you're not using a PVT tool, within two or three card projects, this personalization validation tool will actually pay for itself. So you not only get speed, but you actually recoup your investment. So, um, you know, what we find here with uh, the, the issuers, that uh, the network um, issues that we find for issuers are, are, are quite similar to the, uh, um, the acquiring network, that, that actually the, the, the terminal is more set up for EMV than it is for a specific um, uh, uh, payment system. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, issuers tend to choose an overcomplicated uh, card profile selection, and, uh, uh, and we can help with that if, uh, if necessary. Um, rather than using a, a PVT tool, they tend to go for manual testing, 
uh, which, which uh, uh, means that they end up um, with unnecessary time. And normally this happens uh, at the end of a project when certification is uh, always very tight and you want to get to issuance. And so there's little time actually left for validation. So people automatically try to choose the highest priority service, which then kind of uh, leads to higher costs because we have to perform uh, uh, at very high speed. So really the, the, uh, the main advice is if you can use a standard profile um, uh, as a starting point, if you can use a standard profile, do so. If you can't, then use it as a starting point because if you deviate less from that, then you're more likely to go through CPV much faster. Use a CPV tool and give yourself time for the validation at the end of a, of a long project. Um, if you want to see a demonstration of any of the tools, then we've got uh, tools on the stand and we'd be happy to show you uh, those tools.